Hi guys, and welcome to Mrs. Osterman's Flipped Class Notes. This presentation is about how to take notes in our class. So you might want to get a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and take notes about taking notes. Flip to the next slide as soon as you're ready. Okay, see you over there. In biology class, we use Cornell Notes. Now, you might be thinking, what are Cornell Notes? Let me tell you a little bit about them. Cornell Notes were developed in 1949 by a professor by the name of Walter Pauk at Cornell University. Now, Cornell University is kind of a big deal. It's an Ivy League school up there with Harvard and Yale and Columbia. So it's a pretty big deal, and this guy knew what he was talking about. He was kind of frustrated because whatever he was teaching, the students were not doing very well on tests, and he felt like he was delivering the material very well. So he started looking at how they were taking notes. He designed this system of taking notes that was meant to be used as a, as a study guide for tests, which is really kind of a cool thing. Now, most major universities have um, classes that freshmen can take uh, about study skills, and I know at my middle school we had one too, and a lot of schools now teach students how to use Cornell Notes, so that's what we're going to be doing. You might be thinking to yourself, well, why should we bother taking notes at all? Well, let me tell you, taking notes really helps you. Think about this. If you don't take any notes, you forget at least 60% of what you learned within 14 days. That's a lot, okay? Because usually the tests are more than 14 days later. Um, and 60%, that's over half. If I take some notes, I remember about 60% for 14 days or more, actually. So that's kind of good. If I take organized notes and I actually do something with those notes, though, I remember 90 to 100 percent of what I learned indefinitely. So when we do Cornell notes, we actually do some different things with them. One study shows also that if I read something at least three times with a different purpose each time, I am 95 percent more likely to retain that information. I don't know about you, but I want to increase the odds as much as possible. So now we're asking, when do we take notes? That's a really good question. Notes are a record of what you're learning. So you would take them when you listen to a lecture, like this. You would take them when you're reading text, like you did with your famous scientist, or if you're reading your biology book. You would take them when you watch a film. Maybe you're going to watch a film for um, World Geography. You would take them when you're working in a group or an activity, like on our scientist thing. Or you would write down, like, who's doing what activities or who's doing what parts. Basically, you take notes when you need to recall information about what's happening to you in a class, a meeting, or activity. Okay? So it's pretty much any time you can take notes. So now you're sitting here thinking, okay, Ms. Osterman, why Cornell Notes? Why can't we just do whatever we want? It's a really good question. My question is, why not take them? Because it's a proven system, okay? Cornell Notes stimulates critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills are the higher level thinking skills beyond just what year did Columbus sail and what was the name of his ship. Um, they help us problem solve. Note taking always helps you remember what's said in class, okay? The physical act of writing something down automatically triggers a connection in your brain. Also, when you have good notes, it really helps you work on assignments. It helps you study for tests. And it just is a good practice. Also, when you do Cornell notes, it helps students problem solve because if you're studying with someone, you can always refer back to your notes. You might have different notes than, than your partner. Good notes help you organize and process data and information. Okay, that's kind of obvious. Notes help you recall by getting them to getting you to process them three different ways. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But as we said, 
writing is a great tool for learning. In fact, lots and lots of studies show that the physical act of writing with a pen or paper, uh, those students actually retain the information longer and better than someone who did the notes on a computer. And I can find that data for you. I can find the articles I've read. But basically what it boils down to is when you're actually writing, you're not trying to transcribe word for word. You're actually thinking about what the professor is saying and trying to summarize it so you can put it in notes. Whereas when you do it on a computer, you're just trying to transcribe word for word and you're just listening but not really hearing. So that's a pretty powerful thing to think about. So let's look at how the paper is set up to do these Cornell notes, okay? It's really pretty simple. There's a wide right and a skinny left column. On here it says the column, the left column being about two and a half inches. It doesn't have to be two and a half inches, it could be four fingers. But leave a good amount of room on the right hand side because that's going to be the bulk of what you're doing. Obviously, name date period up in the top right hand corner. You don't have to put the class title because I'm collecting them. I know it's biology unless you get your notes confused. Um, but definitely name date period. And the topic across the top line. Uh, I like to put the chapter and the section so that I can keep them in order. If I just put like biology for the title, I don't know what section it goes with. So uh, chapter one, section one, etc. On that right hand side, that's where you write your class notes. Okay? You can write your class notes however you want to. You can do it in an outline form, you can do it free form, you can draw pictures, whatever. But that's where you write the notes. And kids always say, why can't I write them the way I want? You can on the right hand side. Okay? The left hand side is for questions. Now, I will look for three different types of questions besides things you don't understand. I want you to look at your notes and kind of think about what might get asked on a quiz or a test. Level 1, level 2, and level 3 questions are basically different levels of complexity. Level 1 being the easiest, book only questions. The answers are right there in the book. Level 2, book and brain. Uh, compare, comp compare and contrast questions are a good example of book and brain. You have to know something, but then I kind of have to put the puzzle pieces together a little bit. Level 3 questions are brain only questions. Here I got to know stuff and I'm not putting puzzle pieces together. I'm predicting or I am, um, I am posing a question about what might happen if. So those are the level 3 questions. Essay questions are level 3 questions. The other thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw a line across the bottom of uh, the last part of your notes and you're going to write a summary, uh, three to four sentences telling me what this section of notes is about. Lastly, with, your, with regard to your questions, if there's something that you don't understand or you want clarification of, write that in the question side as well. I might put an arrow next to it um, as a note that, okay, Ms. Oster I need to ask Ms. Osterman about this. But not only are they questions that you can answer, level one, level two, level three, but questions that you might not be certain about. So here's an example of what it might look like, or partly, because there's something missing here. We'll get to that in just a second. This person copied these notes during a lecture on the life cycle of the cattle tick and, and all of the good stuff about a cattle tick. So we've obviously typed the words in because the person's handwriting was actually pretty bad, but what they did was actually really good. Now, afterwards, some questions that I would write by looking at this diagram. Okay, how do, how do ticks find cattle? Well, if I look at this diagram, I can I can kind of tell how um, it finds it. The, it. It hurls itself toward the scent. It smells it smells uh, butyric acid in the in the smell of mammals, and it hurls itself there. So that one's right there. That'd be a level one. Why don't ticks usually kill their host? Well, I I can look at this diagram and I learn a little bit about the ticks, and I can tell well it probably doesn't kill its host because if it does, then it doesn't it doesn't have blood anymore. So that's not a good thing. 
A level three question would be, how would tick infestations in cattle impact humans? That answer is not on here, but I have to know about the tick to be able to answer it. Now, what's the one thing missing on here? The one thing missing on here is the summary. And, and I would put that on here. If that were on here, that would be a complete set of notes. So a couple of tips when you're taking notes. You can always abbreviate. I would caution you, though, to make sure you use abbreviations that you're going to remember. If the lecturer were talking about Hippocrates and said, Hippocrates, a Greek who is considered to be the father of modern medicine, was born on the island of Kos in 460 BC. I might abbreviate my notes to look like what it says down below, where the GR in parentheses stands for Greek. So you can abbreviate all you want. They're your notes. Just make sure you can read your notes. So to summarize things a little bit here, um, when you do your notes, I, I will say WISC. I always use the acronym WISC. W means write your notes on the right-hand side. S stands for summarize. You summarize your notes at the end. And Q stands for question. You write your questions in the left-hand side. Level 1, level 2, level 3 questions. And I'm going to challenge you to think of all three kinds. You should be able to think of at least three level one questions easily. Um, one level one, one level three question. I don't expect a lot of those. Now a lot of people will always say, do you have to do them in that order? Write, summarize, question. My answer is this. Well, sort of, yes. You always have to write your notes first. Some people like to write the questions, then do the summary. Some people like to write the summary, then do the question. That part doesn't matter. Now, I'm sure by this point you're wondering, Miss Osterman, well, what can we do with our notes? We've got these beautiful notes written. Well, in class I might say, get your notes out and compare notes with a partner. That's always a good thing. You talk about what you wrote and why. Maybe your partner wrote something that you didn't. Well, I would expect you to fill in your gaps. You can revise your notes when you're sitting with your partner. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good thing to be able to do. And when you're doing that, you're processing your notes yet another time. You're learning the material. And it doesn't stop there. There's more you can do with your notes. You can work with your partner and create more questions in that, in that wonderful left-hand column. It helps to elicit those critical thinking skills that we were talking about. Um, when I ask you or when I tell you to think of level one, level two, level three questions, think about questions that Miss Osterman might ask on a test. Okay, you might see something and go, oh, I bet she'd ask a question about that. That's a good thing to put in the left hand column. Also, things that you don't understand. Maybe your partner doesn't understand it too. So those level one, level two, and level three questions, what should they reflect again? How should they be? Well, your questions should reflect information that you don't understand or information that you want some clarification about from your teacher or your tutor if you're going to a tutor. I would write your question and maybe even put an arrow pointing to the section that you're not real clear about. Your notes or your questions should reflect information you think you might see on a quiz or a test. And that's what we just talked about. You know, your level one, level two questions. What might Ms. Osterman ask? And lastly, your questions might reflect gaps in your notes. Questions about, well, you know, I missed this here. I don't understand this. So again, it's something you don't understand uh, or gaps in your notes. So if you've made it this far, you're ready to take notes in biology. And we're going to have the notes for Chapter 1, Section 1 up here in a day, uh, maybe even today if I get them done. And you are going to do them in Cornell format. I do collect them and I do grade them. And I'll share the grading rubric with you in class. You'll get them to attach to your notes. So OK, you guys ready? Let's do this. Let's get ready to take notes. See you in class.